Welcome to the Planning Board meeting of January 8th at 6.32-ish tonight. Hey, Annalie. Mm. Hey, Christopher. All right. Um, Emily, would you read the I would. prelude, please? Mm. Thank you. This is Emily Gaylord. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting slash hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Meeting as noted. All right. Thanks, Emily. Okay. Guidelines for the business meeting. Speak one at a time. Follow Deerfield Code of Conduct. Be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and recognized by the chair. And please speak into the microphone. Get this close so everyone can hear you. All right. Um, before we start, I just want to welcome Satu, who is our new, newest planning board member. So we're pretty excited that she's here. Okay. Nice, to right. be. nice to be here. <laughs> Great. All right. So, okay, the next thing is uh, board members in attendance. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord here. Emily, um, Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson here. Satu Zoller. Satu Zoller here. Kathy Wachroba. Kathy Wachroba here. And Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester here. And Denise Mason here. Great. Okay. So review the minutes. Um, I think we're, we have uh, the first four are on hold, which will be done soon. And so we're reviewing the minutes of 1214. Are there any additions, oh. corrections? I'm oh. sorry, 124. Thanks. No, I move that we accept the minutes as submitted. All right. What, for December 4th, this is Andrea. Emily yeah. Gaylord, second. All right. Um, all in favor? Kathy Sylvester? Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Wittroba? Kathy Wittroba, yes. Um, set two, I mean, you can abstain. abstain. Yep, okay. <laughs> Andrew Leibson? Uh, Andrew Leibson, yes. Emily Gaylord? Emily Gaylord, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. So those minutes are done. And we will address the other minutes very soon. All right. New business. Um, we have the Solar Committee presentation. And I think you ought to go ahead so that I can get this. I got it. I found it. But I just need to forward it to Amy. Okay. So if you just change the go ahead. Well, there's not a whole lot then, to go ahead with. But it, <laughs> yes, we will go ahead. Okay. So solar presentation is on hold for a few moments. So in the meantime, okay. Let's see. We have, and it's still, I mean, it, it was accepted at, at uh, the special town meeting, our chapter 179 bylaws, and we will, they are in effect now, unless the attorney general says there's something that needs to be corrected. But aside from that, these should be all set. And Amy was kind enough to make copies and put hole punches so you can put them in a binder. Thank you, Amy. And then we also have the, <laughs> new, the official zoning map, which is so much better than the last one. Wow. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's great. So that's really good. And, um, you know, once again, I know she's retired, but um, gosh, thank you so much. Oh, I forget her name. That's terrible. No, you made me oh, Peggy. Peggy Sloan. Peggy Sloan, Peggy Sloan who was amazing. Retired? Yeah, she retired. She retired in, in October. So we, oh, we were just under the wire. So we got her help and then she retired. She so. worked with us and then retired. Sure. Yeah. It worked with us and it was yeah. like that's no, so that was that was great. Clear over the end. Yeah. Okay. Well, she was amazing. All right. Um, how are we doing over there? One second. <laughs> are these to replace the ones that we currently have in our yes. binders? Okay. Yeah, so you can take if you, and Satu, I don't know if I don't think it's chapter one seventy nine is in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that was removed from your binder, so you can just put that in. Perfect. So we should be all set. And I don't anticipate any issues because Peggy was did a really great job helping us do these. Okay. I sent it. Oh, okay. So Amy, um, 
Emma just sent the presentation to you, so. Okay, I'm looking at my email, just waiting for it to pop up. <clears throat> I can start with uh, introductions and a couple yeah, of things. Got, put the mic much closer, like much right, up closer. Your, right up to your face, please. <laughs> Like that? Yeah, like that. that. Because you know what? If not, we can hear you. People on Zoom can't hear you. And I watch meetings and it's really difficult. No, I, I totally understand. Yeah, hear what's going on. So okay. that's okay. All right. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to, well, we are the Solar Action, Deerfield Solar Action Committee. The UMass worked with us over the last year and um, with with a couple of stu students and um, put together an action plan. They did this for a lot of communities in the area. Um, and uh, so they sent us a draft in this summer and um, and it it's fairly long, like 18 pages or so. So the point of this presentation is to, not make you read that whole presentation, <laughs> um, but just give you an introduction to it and to um, get some input because the process will be that uh, we're going to present to a variety of co committees, town committees, including the select board. Um, they eventually need to approve this plan and it's a multi-year plan and we need to um, put together um, a strategy for moving forward because we are a committee of four and there's no way that four people can ever implement a whole solar plan for the town of Deerfield. So um, this is Ann Buchanan. She is a member of the committee. Lily Dwight's a member of the committee and Lori Busada and me. So, um, and really today is going to be a general quick presentation and to get feedback from you all. So the presentation will take about 10 minutes. Did you get it yet, Amy? Uh, I did. I'm just managing. Uh, let me share my okay, screen no hurry, and I'll get it up talking. here. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's because we need to put together a strategy uh, and get input from lots of committees. It's important that lots of everybody in town knows about this. And eventually, um, the UMass faculty will come and do a present a, a forum, a public forum for the town um, regarding this and, and sort of the process. Okay, should I hit um, run? Are we good? I'm good. It's okay. Um, Amy, can you just minimize the um, viewer windows? It's covering the screen a little bit. Uh, hold on. <laughs> so this is a Ready Kilowatt presentation. Some of you may remember Ready Kilowatt. <laughs> um, so uh, first slide. If you just push oh, that. I'm arrow. sorry. This is push. really awkward. You're going to have to give push me a the second arrows here. at the bottom. I know, but I, I've got some problems with uh, things being in my way. Let me make this big. Okay, there you go. All set. Second uh, slide. When you have a when so you I I can't see like what those No, you don't have to. Yet. Okay. It'll go it'll go through it. That's okay, just Okay, great. Right. Um third slide. And are these <laughs> okay? <Freddy's> nose. <laughs> Fourth slide. There we go. Whoops, there's Reddy's nose again. Uh, I'm hitting forward, so I have two. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So there are um, five main categories for solar development. Oh, well, let's go to that slide. Um, our goal is to be completely self-sufficient by 2020, by 2050, um, with alternate, with, um, 
sustainable energy. So off of fossil fuels, et cetera, et cetera. And that's a goal that the town has set, and it's also the goal of the state. The state has set that goal too. So next slide. Amy, I bet your um, arrow keys on your keyboard will work too, and that might be easier. Okay, I'm thinking it might just be taking a long time connecting, but let me, there we go. Yep, thank you. That was a good hint. So currently, we have 13 megawatts of solar. We need 94 megawatts of solar in order to meet the anticipated, the, the goal that once, you know, because the cars are going to be electrified and, and people are going to use a lot more heat pumps and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's seven, we have to increase our production by seven, uh, seven times May by I 2050. So that's a, that's a big goal. Can I ask a question here? Of course. What, who's we? The town of Deerfield. The people that live it, all of it's, us who have it's solar everybody. panels, it's, everybody it's, solar panels it, and electric cars add up to 13 megawatts. Right I, now we're producing in, with individual houses on people's roofs, with um, with the big install, the big um, three, we have three big solar uh, arrays in town that are um, third party owned. Yeah. Okay. And et cetera, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Um, and th all this data was put together by UMass. It's not like absolutely verified because they got most of it off of the web and various places. They didn't, they didn't go around and talk to people. Um, next slide. There are five main categories of solar development, business and institutions. And the next slide is barns and farms. Oh, no, we're going to do it that way. Okay. Um, so uh, the businesses businesses and institutions um, is going to be, if, if it's going to be an effort of mainly at education and, and public relations to convince businesses and institutions to put more solar on. Um, it doesn't really benefit the taxpayers financially. Um, and that's also the same with the next one, which is barns and farms. Next slide. Next slide, sorry. Um, and again, barns and farms, um, and also residentials, which is the one after this, none of them, they're all basically a PR effort, um, educating people, convincing them to put solar on their roof or on, you know, in their field or whatever. So, um, but pros and cons of, uh, large barns are large surface areas, but also they're unreliable. Some of them are not young and they don't necessarily face south. And, uh, and also um, there, but also there's a lot of good grants available, federal and state for putting solar on, on, at, on farms. Mm -hmm. And also there's a lot of research going on right now about agrisolar, what, what's called agrisolar, which is growing things under solar um, installations. Um, and that's a really, a, that's a field that is really starting to take off, but it's a lot of the research is new. And also um, the Municipal Vulnerability Prevention Group is doing research for farmers and grants and looking for grants for farmers. So that's that's something that's sort of progressing. Next slide. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, Satu Zoller, the slide said that the 
taxpayers do receive a ben benefit from barns, but I thought you said they don't. But no, it's they don't. I mean, it's for the farmer. Okay, but it's a pros. Well, there. the farmer is a taxpayer, right? Presumably, the farmer yeah. is definitely a right. taxpayer, but it's not taxpayers in general, right? Like municipal buildings okay. helps everybody. Okay, so that's where you're just that's differentiating. Where I'm okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, residential, uh, it's as I said, it's mainly a sales pitch. Um, the one thing it does do is pay for your electric vehicle. Uh, but and it definitely benefits the individual people, but not taxpayers right. in general. Um, next slide. Large ground mount mounted solar um, is the uh, uh, is it, it basically it's significant. You get a lot for your money. Uh, however. We have been trying to get solar on the landfill for over 10 years, and it still isn't. I think they're renegotiating it again. So um, mm -hmm. it's really a lot of work to get to get it right. And uh, but when it is, it brings in money to the town. So the town gets yeah. um, it gets a pilot pay payment in lieu of taxes. And if it's town-owned land, it gets uh, rent or lease money. Well, by the way, I mean the planning board did approve that. I know. So, I, you know, I don't know what's going on because I haven't heard back. So Tim, Tim said that they're trying to renegotiate the the deal. Well, they may have to come back to us. Who's <laughs> well? Who's, who's renegotiating? The solar company is trying to renegotiate. Next amp, and I I don't know who with. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Tim, it was it was a passing comment that Tim made to me. I, I heard the same. Okay. So yeah. I and I love love to know more about it, but it really made me right irritate. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so that uh, next slide. So municipal buildings are. Uh, they're large surfaces for generation. Uh, they're significant power consumers. The you know we have a lot of buildings. Um, they they do affect the taxpayer, and um, the town can earn energy energy credits. Except for probably we would consume everything that we produced most likely. Um, we are in the process right now. The energy committee and um, and various other committees are looking at investigating solar on the frontier roof, on the new library, on the 1888 building, on the 1821 building, on the DPW, at the elementary school, the wastewater treatment plant, and the senior housing. So that is well underway. Not that we've accomplished anything yet, but it's something that we're really paying attention to. Um, and uh, so that's pretty much it. So those are the categories. And um, what we're looking for you, if open it up for the, to discussion, would be, you know, where do we start? How do what what's what's the biggest bang for our buck? What what do you have any questions? You know, you have the floor. Go ahead. Okay, I'll start off. Is it, does anyone? I mean, I've got, I guess I've got comments, but okay. Well. I'll, I'll start off, you know, going through the presentation, I actually heard this before because you did it for the CCI, so right. we already heard this. But, um, you know, I understand with barns, with a lot of the structures, it has to be a solid structure in order to put solar on. So that's one issue. But I think, you know, as you said, moving forward, it totally makes sense to do municipal because that is a benefit to the taxpayer, and that's a real plus. Um you know, just one comment is, as far as meeting our our goal by 2050, I just read an article in the paper that as far as mini splits and heat pumps, we have only achieved 1% of what we need to do in the state of Massachusetts. So we have a long way to go. We have a that. long way to yeah. go. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, those are my comments. Um, Emily, Andrew? 
I feel like I need to put in a disclaimer only because I'm the communications director at the Center for Eco Technology or CET. So I feel like I need to just state that before I say anything. Um, so my first question is if you're tied in at all with the Mass Farm Energy Program, which is free assistance to farms to facilitate REAP grants and MDAR grants. And I'm assuming that that's part of what what's talked about in the farms, but I just want to make sure that our farmers know about that. And if not, well, what um, on the 24th of January, the Municipal Vulnerability Prevention Committee is going is holding a workshop for farmers. And it's talking about, you know, we're, we're gathering people from the feds, federal government, from the state uh, and um, and help. And we're also trying to get somebody. I think we're working also with CESA and mm -hmm. um, to have a grant writing support and um and and that workshop on all the grants that are available both solar and and uh other you know all all of it all yeah. of that but yeah yeah so that program and again disclaimer you, when you call that number it's calling my off well <laughs> it's calling megan who i work with um but it's basically hand holding so instead of just learning about the grant we have someone who will walk them through the whole process, yeah. which is often if, needed. It may be that somebody's already talked okay, to you, well, great. but I don't know. I don't. But I, if not, that's a really good so resource. What, what, remind me the name of it's. So I'm. I work for CET, but this is. I know. I know CEC. It's one of my favorite organizations. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. No. Um. It's the Mass Farm Energy Program. So MFEP or Mass Farm Energy dot. Oh, it should be an org, but for some reason, I think it's a dot .com. Um, the other thing I'm curious about is you're the solar committee, but as we know to the heat pump conversation, the electric vehicle conversation, where we're really going is like full decarbonization and electrification. And I'm curious how that factors into the solar committee. Well, this is this, pro this project was specifically um, through the UMass uh, Clean Energy Clean Energy Center. Se uh, yeah, center. I guess I can't remember. Oh. Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, it's it's the UMass extension. Extension. Uh, extension. Um, and so they were looking just at solar, but um, obviously, uh, I would love it if uh, Massachusetts started up the Solarize program again. Mm -hmm. um, that because when when that shut down before COVID uh, or at COVID. Um, they were doing heat pumps. They were doing um, all. They were including electric vehicles. They included everything in in that generalized. And and that's how you're going to get residents and um, other. You know that, that's part. That's the uh, the sales pitch yeah. that that basically needs to happen. Is is and one and, pays for the other basically. Yeah. So, um, but it's really hard to do. We don't have the resources. There's only a committee of four and event. So what we need is, um, you know, money to be able to pay people to to do that sales, that big sales pitch to businesses, to farms and, you know, and uh, and residential. Well, and with the municipal buildings, with so much being under renovation or being new construction, it's the perfect time to install solar because you're going to have brand new roofs going underneath the installation. So from a town perspective, I would think it would make an incredible amount of sense given our climate goals as a town outside of your committee goals as right. a committee and the state's goals. So that seems right. like a really great that, opportunity. That, I think that general, we've talked to a couple of other committees and everybody says, let's start with municipal. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you guys are nodding your heads to that. I yeah. think that's our, oh, go ahead. Oh, I just want to say I'm on the library building committee and we definitely are. Yes. Yes. And <laughs> solar and is part of the It really design. makes sense yeah. to have the library be the yeah. first of the first because, um, so we're, I mean, we're talking to the UMass folks. There's, um, I just, uh, well, there's a new program called the, that, that, uh, DOER, you probably know about this, but DOER is starting up uh, Green Communities 2.0, which is called the something leadership 
programs or leaders uh community no what is it anyhow it's it's a it's a leadership program it's basically you apply you 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 apply you jump through some hoops we'll be talking to the um select board about it but if you if you become uh, a leader community uh then you then become uh, avail of solar money for solar grants becomes available which right now green communities doesn't do right. they're talking about it and maybe they will but right now they don't do solar and solar is i, I mean that's where that we'd really like as we do these renovations to have solar on all these buildings and um and all of them are all of them are uh would be good candidates for solar so um we're that's going to be something that we're going to be working on in the next month or two with the select board to become uh, a, a community leader uh, uh, climate that's what is cl mm -hmm. climate community leader is what it's called um and we'll be working with most likely um FERCOG is going to be helping Great. with a technical assistance mm -hmm. grant on that so so um ma once we get some on the MVP committee too. But once we get that to the 2.0, don't we automatically get $50,000 to start? From the MVP, yes, but it, the, program, the, the projects that um, we're working on are not solar. I mean, the ones that everybody's talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, right. So yes, eventually that would be great, but I, I haven't been, MVP is really, talking more about vulnerability and vulnerability prevention rather than right okay. rather than um you know so putting out on alternative energies um i just sent you also a thing about uh a, a possibility for uh a, a grant possibility for um geothermal Mm, okay. I sent that to you today. If it actually went to you, I don't know. If public <laughs> comment is open, Annalie's trying to get our attention. Oh, hi, Annalie. If possible, at this point, I can wait. No, go ahead. Um, just a question for the planning board to possibly consider. We have our solar bylaws, and as we well know, so many of our bylaws say to the extent possible, as much as feasible, and if there's a way that maybe the planning board, with the assistance of the UMass folks that have been helping the solar subcommittee, as well as uh, our new Christopher, uh, could explore how other towns are, in fact, really putting some teeth into their solar bylaws bylaws so that new development at least um is potentially even required to have solar so just a thought thank you um me you <laughs> no go ahead oh okay um Yes, and and there are some. I don't, and I don't. I'm not a member of the planning board, so I don't know whether they're useful suggestions or not. But in the plan, there are specific suggestions for the planning board, and I can send those to you separately if that would be useful. Um, you can say, if anything like that, you can just send to Amy. Send and it she'll, to me. Yeah, she'll okay. send that out to us. Yep, I will Thanks. do this. Yeah, I mean, we just we just revised our entire 160 page bylaw, so. <laughs> but I think we did stipulate climate in there yeah. pretty heavy handedly. Yeah, definitely. So do you want us to make a recommendation? So you can so it can be official. Can't hurt. Okay. So we talked about it seems that people are interested or think maybe the best direction to go is starting out with municipal the municipal buildings. And do you want us to prioritize? I mean you know, my th my thinking is that the library is going forward. Out of everything, that's the first one that's going forward, and they're going to break ground in February. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it to me it makes total sense to start with the library, and then we'll continue from there. You know, as we get the fund. I mean, you know, there's some funding that's potential funding that will come through, uh, certainly for the 1888 building. So that could be the second one. Right. So, um, this is Andrea. Uh, 
I also wonder about the schools. I mean, we have the public schools. We have them. They're right. built. We don't have to worry about you know waiting for them to be built. I would make that a very high priority. Yeah, with this well, with Frontier, I think already has a plan. They've got some roof issues, so that's going to be something that happens over the next couple of years. Whereas the new build would be in the library. So no, I, I'm, I, I understand, and I also I understand that canopies are more expensive, but yes. are they more expensive than a new roof? And yeah, I but I still would like the idea right. of pursuing some of that because Frontier has a big old parking lot. Yes. So yes. part of that could... Um... And they're talking about redoing that parking lot, but I don't know when. Um, our communication with Frontier is improving. And um, they we have just had energy audits done by, um, by uh, Eversource. And, but they were done by an engineer. They're not the light bulb. Come into your house and mm -hmm. hand you a light bulb and leave. Um, audits. They are. These are serious ones. And they will. Um, I'm pretty sure they will qualify. The inf the information that's in them will qualify us for green communities grant money. Um, and right now, that you know, green again. They don't do solar, and they're not going to mm. put solar on the roof, but. And, but we are also looking because well both the, both schools will need an engineering study um, to make sure that the roofs are uh, strong enough and blah 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 blah. So anyhow, that information I think is in these audits, and so that's sort of moving forward. But we're not sure. Um, we're definitely looking at both schools, but. And I, this is Andrea again. The cost-benefit analysis should be done, I guess, of canopies, and that you do less plowing, and uh, maybe the because there's less weather, less rain, less snow on the pavement, it it lasts longer. So I understand that canopies may be expensive, but I think there are other savings. I uh, think I think you're right. Um, weren't you yeah. looking at? Weren't you going to look into that? The solar committee. I think we talked about that and talked about the different canopies. I mean, there's one over in Sutherland. What is the the apartments over in Sutherland? Also at the Franklin County Jail. So I mean, there. Yeah, you know, there's probably UMass has huge. UMass has huge. Mass has has huge well, so yeah, right. So, um, yeah, you can ask your people at UMass yes, about <laughs> definitely can. And I think I think you're right. The the cost and benefit analysis is a key piece of that. And uh, but again, if you have to redo the whole parking lot, so if the parking lot is being redone or if the roof is being replaced, that's the time that that's going to be the best time to. And and I guess we want to make sure that the schools know that or whoever's in charge of the maintenance knows that so they don't plan a yeah. parking lot and then oops they didn't exactly. know about the yes canopies. Okay. Um, sorry i just wanted to add so it does make a great deal of sense to start with the municipal buildings except that there's also a lot of red tape around municipal buildings in terms of what you having to wait for votes having to wait for approvals all of that yeah. No. No. Well, so no, not with the library. No, no, that's no, not, not, not with the library. But the that's... library, fine. That's already yeah. part of the plan. But if we're going to go through everything else, it's, it's all stuff that invites right. conversation. My only point is congruently, business community gets to bypass a lot of that, and so there is an argument for working with the businesses in town. There aren't that many, <laughs> um, and the ones that we do have do have a lot of roof space. Um, so it might be worth having parallel conversations, knowing that maybe the sphere of our control is the town and the municipal buildings and being able to put our sink our teeth in there a little bit, but also understanding that there is financial incentives and rebates for businesses and that they might actually be able to move a little quicker. Um, this is Andrea again. I'm thinking about negotiating um, for certain companies that want to expand their operations. <laughs> could, they, could we um, recommend that they do solar in order to it's a wonderful place for the planning board to have a conversation yeah. one of the problems is the four of us don't really have any connections with the people who run the businesses and so you really i mean who they're going to listen to are 
or either planning board where you say, you select if, yeah. or, you know, if you right. do this, maybe this won't happen right. or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, and, or, or other business, other businesses, you know, like if there's a president of a business or something wants to, wants to go around and talk to other businesses and tell them how important it is or whatever. But I, I just don't think I, we don't have the leverage, the four right. of us. So we are, I mean, Yes, I agree. It's a, okay. it's a, well, you know, I was just going to say, I think these are all, all really good ideas. And, and I think that we should pursue that, but it's one step at a time. And I think the purpose for tonight is do we support what you're doing? <laughs> and do we agree that we should start with municipal buildings? And it doesn't mean that if we start with the library, it doesn't mean we're not going to do the schools, but that's probably going to happen first. I mean, the library construction is going to happen before. Anything's decided with Deerfield Elementary or Frontier. I mean, as far yeah, as yeah, and know. wastewater treatment plant again. Right. I think I need to look at how much electricity right. they use to see if they're a really big user because they also have a roof that's perfect yeah. and it's brand new. Yeah. So, um, and so does New Pro, right? Yeah, that's your job. <laughs> okay. It's, so, so to, to yeah. deal with New Pro. Um, that's what I was thinking. So why don't we, I mean, so let's just go around and say, you know, just for recommendation, Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrew Leipson. Yes, I agree with this idea. <laughs> okay. Satu. <laughs> Satu Zoller, yes. Okay. Kathy Wittroba. So just to be clear, so this vote is to continue this conversation and recommend that we continue the conversation? Well, it's it's basically just supporting it's supporting the solar committee and how they move forward, and more specifically with municipal buildings. That that seemed seemed to be the consensus, whether it's the schools, the library, any municipal buildings, as opposed to business, because the municipal buildings uh, is, you know, w would be good for the tax, you know, or our community and for taxes, whereas businesses don't, even though correct. Right. And so moving forward by putting solar pan panels on municipal buildings is to the cost of whom? I'm sorry, is what? It's to the cost of whom? So like, say we decide, I just want to make sure that what I'm voting yes on, I just have clarity on that. So it's, it, it, it's not voting yes, you know, that, that we're going to be held to anything. We're just recommending that the solar... The solar company, the solar uh, committee moves forward with this. Okay. We're not, we're not being tied to well, this is This is just a preliminary conversation to discuss where the best place to start with the solar panel placements would be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kathy would Okay. okay. <laughs> and so Kathy Sylvester? Um, Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. Okay. I think that's that's pretty much it. But you know, yeah, kind of... mainly it was just so that you all know that we exist, right? And that we're moving okay. forward, and that um, we need your help and support uh, yep. for all sorts of things ongoing through twenty fifty. And to, and to get periodic updates would would be would be yep. great. You know, whether you come back or send something to Amy to you know send out to all yep. of us would be really yep. good. Okay, great. thanks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank thank you, you for you. your work. Yes. And we hope to see you and everybody else tomorrow night at the informational session at Frontier I at 6 p.m. Um, our neighborhood. Um, Good. I don't, I know that they've gotten a lot of notices about voting and, and they also know that their sidewalks won't be plowed if they don't vote. Yes. So, so I think it's maybe that's not a thing I'm supposed to say. I'm, well, they probably can't hear you because you're not going to like Good to go. So, um, but but as to who shows up yep. tomorrow night, I can't promise you. But I said, I'll, excellent. I'll be there. I got to go to yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing yoga to go to. That. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hi, thank thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Can we get a copy of the PowerPoint as well? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'll I'll send that out to all you guys. Great, thank, thank you. you. Great, thanks, Amy. Sure. All right, so I guess we we already went over that we have 
the copies of chapter 179 and the map. I mean, it's I knew it was going to be a sh short meeting tonight. Any other, any old business? No. Any business not reasonably anticipated? Does anybody have any? No. Any reports? Andrea? The Open Space and Recreation Committee is busily writing an application for um, Community Preservation Act funds to be able to permanently protect four town-owned pieces of property. And we are we're working on that um, regularly. We are working in, um, in collaboration with Franklin Land Trust on this. That's great. Thanks, Andrea. Satu, do you want to mention anything about the library? I know we have a meeting tomorrow. Yes, we have a building committee tomorrow, and things are moving along. We're pretty certain of um, February, early February, as a bit as a breaking ground date, and we'll let everyone know so you can all come. That's great. Good, Kathy. Anything um, on senior housing? Well, first on the CPC, I uh, somehow ended up being the chair, and um, <laughs> it's, just, it's a long story. Um, so we're collecting applications, as you know, and I have not received any yet. Um, we're having a public hearing January 31st to get input from the town residents as to what would be, what would they would like to see us support in town. Ba Excuse um, me, Kathy. This is yeah. Andrea. Based on the, the applications you receive or just in general? In general, like because this could be uh, the first year we get more requests than we have money. And if that were to get a case, we want to get input. We're supposed to have these every year, we found out. We haven't had them ever that I know of. Oh, wow. So um, we had a, a, a meeting with uh, Stuart Saginaw at the state level who went over all the things we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so that's one. And so we're getting an education, or I am anyway. Um, we have an opening that the select board needs to uh, appoint somebody. And we do have one person interested in that position. And we also have another opening from, oh, I forget which committee, that somebody resigned. And then the senior housing, we're hoping to close on the property of the St. James and the rectory in April. And um, we're going to meet with the engineers to see the viability of the St. James Church uh, as folding it as part of the development. Um, it's questionable if that building would be um, usable because of the new codes with energy codes, et cetera, and whatever developer comes in to build, you know, it's really going to be up to them whether they want to put the money into that building or not, but that's our desire as a town. And there's no plumbing. Yeah, so there's, you know, there's a lot of no ifs, plumbing. and um, it is a desire of the residents to try to keep the church, but the reality is we we don't know if that's going to be feasible. So we did put out word to ask the residents if they were very interested, they could consider moving the church, and no one has really stepped forward. All right, thanks. So, yeah, wow. that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? I think we're... Probably good. Okay. I think we've probably reached the end of the meeting here. <laughs> oh, I'm so um Fran, I know you've attended a bunch of different meetings. Do you have any questions? It's okay. No? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And Christopher? Everyone knows that Christopher is our new planning and economic mm -hmm. development. Okay, thank you. If you're listening, Christopher. Okay, all right. All hey, set. Thanks, Denise. Okay. So if there's nothing else to cover, do I hear a motion? I move to adjourn. Emily Gaylord. Uh, Andrea Leaps and I second. Okay. Um, Kathy Latroba? Kathy Latroba, yes. 
Okay, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Satu Zoller. Satu Zoller, yes. Andrew Leibson. Andrew Leibson, yes. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.